Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the League OS Scholastic Championship. My name is Whoopshu. Join alongside, of course, for the action is my good friend Wolfie. And we appreciate you guys so much for sticking with us through that uh, little bit of a longer break. But in case you guys weren't here for the first matchup, let me go ahead and just bring you guys back up to speed. Lincoln Way East, number one seed over on the left half of the bracket, taking out number four, Springfield Capitals. And they quickly made that one into a 4-0 series sweep in favor of Lincoln Way East. And now we find ourselves in the next matchup right now. Linden High versus Rigby High. And Wolfie, I think it's going to be a closer matchup than that 4-0 sweep. You know, this is going to be, I feel, one of the best matchups, especially when you're looking at it on paper. But, you know, these two teams still need to come out, put all their hard work on the pitch here tonight and you know what we're hoping for with some of these best of sevens just for these squads to just be competitive i i look back at that last game that we just had and i, I don't think the score sheet kind of told us the entire story yes there was dominance from lincoln way, lincoln way but there was still that that fighting spirit here for springfield and that's what, what these two teams are going to have to come in and do but one thing that's going to have to be is which one of them is ready for the lights here i believe it's winner to go home so these squads really needing to come in here and put their best foot forward as there is a third place match, but whoops, you, you, these teams want the pride. They, they want to know that they came out on top and this is the road to get there. Yeah, exactly. Both these teams hard fought in the uh, you know regular season. Now we find ourselves in the playoffs as well. Number two, Linden High sitting in the, the, the uh, five and one record currently. And then taking on the number three seed as well, you know, Rigby High, four and two. And uh, the last time these two teams met was back in week number two, think all the way back. And uh, it was actually in favor of Linden uh, in the three to one victory. So, I mean, it was a close game, though. You know, three to one in the first game, two to one in the second game, two to four in favor of Rigby there. Uh, so they have the offensive capabilities and a quickly a 3-0 uh, victory for Linden to kind of wrap up that series. So, I mean, they have the capabilities. You know, this one can, I can foresee going back and forth, especially with how close those score lines were. And I think it's going to be a lot more competitive, like I said beforehand. So, I mean, um, you know, just the number two, number three seeding usually have that little bit of a history and they're trying to stay in that upper bracket. They don't, they're, they're not hungry for that third place spot. Well, I'll tell you that much right now. You know, and that's where we really are going to see in game number one. I, I always say game one's a testing out period. I set it back for the, for the first game, but it, it really is the factor. You really didn't see this Lincoln way side really get going till that second half of game number one. So we'll have to see. Are these two teams going to be conservative to start this game off? Or are they going to just go and throw the kitchen sink to really throw this team off their back heels? But well, we've seen a lot of high-level Rocket League in our time here uh, as casters. And, you know, these players, they're trying to get to that echelon. But what's one thing that you always see from, the, uh, from RLCS, from those pro players, that you're hoping that these younger players here try to adopt? Uh, I mean, I think it's one major thing I always see is like a kickoff strategy being involved. You have to have that first initial contact uh, off the kickoff and have some sort of strategy behind that as well. And I'm not talking about just your traditional like Spanish kickoffs or fakes or things of that nature. I'm talking about you have, of course, that 50-50 that comes through the mid. You have the cheat up that comes through. But what happens afterwards is you have to have some sort of pressure establishing play to get the ball onto the opposite end of the field and get it in your favor. On top of that, start to implement some sort of, you know, boost dealing strategy is what i always see uh from the high tier you, you start to see you know uh i know a lot of people talk about the 100 boost pads but you start to see the utilization of those penny pads is what we call it you know the 12 pads uh, they start to pick some of those up and those are so much more crucial as well because it starts the yeah. suffocation process on the defensive end you know you start to seal the, the 100 pads of course that's just detrimental but those those 12 pads add up quickly and obviously you know with 40 boosts in the tank you could get a you know pretty detrimental clear so i want to see you know kickoff goals kickoff strategies more implementation down here um to bring that with them into that collegiate side of things you know and looking at the collegiate side of things you, you have to really give it up to los for allowing these students the opportunity we, we see so many students uh look upon some of the great CRL players that currently are, but the fact that just getting any type of scholarship to go on to the next level to allow yourself to further on your education you is the number one aspect that we love to watch here yep. in, in, in these moments. But ladies and gentlemen, the action is still going to take a little minute here, but this allows for the momentum to, to really build here as the pot's just going to continue to boil. We said this is two versus three, one of the best matchups to really watch out for. And you know, when you have an entire league play where you've seen these teams before, whoops, how do you go into matchups saying, hey, it's time for us to really change things up 
or are you more saying we have to stick to what the game plan is throughout this entire season and not really try to defer from what's outside of ourselves? I mean, honestly, it's a little bit of a mixture of both in my personal opinion. You have to be able to recognize what you are, what your offense is, what your team is at this point, because everybody knows, you know, they watch replay reviews, they watch the streams live. They know how your offense looks, what your strategy is involved in that as well. So in my personal opinion, you stick to that until you start to see the counter of, you know, what your strategy is. And then you kind of have to counter the counter, if that makes any sense, and try to kind of stray away from that identity and mix it up. You know, when you see at the high level, even collegiate play, you start to see two, three different strategies being involved, implemented in some of these series, because best of sevens are long series. And if you mm -hmm. play game one, how you played game two, essentially you start to pick up, or the defense, the opposite team, whoever it may be, starts to pick up um, what you're doing and they start to kind of counter that and um basically that's when the series starts to kind of switch and you know go in their favor um but woofy yeah i i think uh it's a, it's a combination of both you kind of have to do both um stay true to what you know and then maybe go back to that later on in the series you know once things start to get a little bit lengthy go back to that and uh go go to what works you know, Wolves, you talk about how the length of these matches come into effect. I, I me and you, uh, you know, I've put this out there just because I, I love saying it whenever we have. We, we commentated the longest overtime that went a uh, best of seven we in we Sam did. for Godspeed versus, I believe it was Endgame. And, you know, we, we saw how teams, when they go to the battle, Godspeed was able to win that OT, but right after you saw the wear, the wear kind of come on to them where they weren't able to really come away with that game. But, when you how do you really focus on stamina in, in these matchups knowing when to turn it on when to turn it off because these players are going to have to really put their foot down and keep it there to really not allow too much struggling to happen to allow for a jiu-jitsu match here where one of them's grabbing the back one of them took guard somebody's finding ways to get the better position on the other i mean that's essentially the uh the vault breaker i guess you could kind of mm -hmm. say it's the longevity the mental battle a lot of people don't really take into consideration with rocket league because you're, you're sitting here playing you have the quick succession games only five minutes a piece but when you get into some of those lengthy overtimes or even the lengthy series you know sometimes you have multiple overtimes in the best of seven series because the teams are so evenly matched um i can foresee that one happening here the storyline for this game or this series i should say um you start to kind of ask yourself how long can one team play at that high level a lot of people kind of fail to register that and that's what really starts to set up that detrimentalness inside someone's team you know you, you play for 13 plus minutes at you know such a high level where you're going back and forth back and forth and then eventually that next game you have like that sigh of relief but you have to go right back to work and turn it right back on you know so it's it's very very hard to kind of tell people that there is a mental part of rocket league and I tell you what, Wolfie, if I had the answer for that one, I definitely would give it to you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, five minutes all answered are about to be put on display here as we'll see which one of these squads to start off early is a good touch here. We'll leave it on to the blue half as goal number one going to be one of the most pivotal between these two squads as Rigby trying to find a way in that corner to make something lucrative. Jimmy off the backboard may have a chance, but no boost to really get things going. A couple people to watch out for here. Top goal scorer in the whole entire league, I believe, is Brody Jimmy, averaging about two goals a game. So if you have a chance right now, if you're Rigby, in my personal opinion, that is definitely uh, going to be the player to kind of watch and keep your eye on, get him activated, get him you know going here. As he approaches the sidewall, maybe potentially a double tap in his future. Flip reset, trying to get a pass down to his teammate who was just waiting there. Unfortunately, that one falls away to the wayside. You know, and, and looking at this squad on paper, when we're looking at Linden, each one of their players in that GC area, two GC1, two GC2s, but you're showing how this squad is able to really come out. When you're looking at it, one GC2 here for Rigby, two C2, uh, one C2, one C3, but they're coming out and showing, hey, it doesn't matter what it says. We have three more games played. We have that experience together as Aldraz trying to find a, a way to get off his half, but unfortunately can't get off. So lots of time though, and like you said before, and this is the feeler game, you know, both teams really trying to, you know, feel out what the other team is trying to do, not trying to give up too much of the strategy just yet. But at the same time, if you get yourself a goal in these situations, it's definitely favored. Good save right now. 
This one's bringing up field towards the blue half of the field. And, and right now, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, Rigby, they're looking very strong as you see a shot from TJ. Gonna be denied by the woodwork, but at the same time, Rigby, they're doing a very good job at establishing their offensive footing, but they just haven't really found just yet what, uh, what it means for success on the offensive end. The squad, I feel they just have to get more of everyone involved. Uh, they haven't really had too many passing plays developed. They've been on their back heels most of the, the entire time. And when they go up, it seems to just be a one on two, one on three play for themselves. The good 50 will lead that towards mid. As again, no one able to take too much possession. And this is kind of where these squads are just going for these long periods. Try to get some open space to put yourself in good positions as that shot, last second heroics, denies it. Yeah, Jimmy with a shot being fired as well. Max going to save this one away initially. And that side shot, the awkward angle that we were talking about last time that ended in overtime, courtesy of Hart in that last series. That one is denied as well. This one's off the backboard. Now Jimmy fires another shot, and you can see as to why he's the leading scorer so far in the league. And he has just been everywhere. He has to see at the, the bottom of his team in points, but three shots to his name. No one else coming close to that here. Actually leading the entire lobby, but two minutes remaining. No one able to take the monkey off their back and grab the first goal as the patience starting to exude. And you have to like the way these teams aren't allowing the moment to get the best of them. All Zerk bringing this one up towards the right hand side. Big time bump as well. That opens up the door for Jimmy big time. Watch this play back real quick. All Zerk just lays this one up a big 50 50. And on top of that, just going for the goal line bump on the last man back. Jimmy, though, solidifies the opening goal here in the series. Rigby up by one. Rigby coming to this matchup. Trying to find some confidence, but when you have a player like him on your side, you know you're looking for some good fortunes as this squad just need to get a bit more going here for this blue side. I, they are in this game. They can really take this matchup for themselves. He's going to be one of the closest game, uh, matchups that we've seen all day. Whoops, I think you're going to be absolutely correct as Relic. Good pinch. Won't be able to get the second touch. So this one will just float slowly into the corner. Lots of time, though. About 90 seconds. Oh, my goodness. A nice flick towards the net. I believe that was all Zerk. I'm not too sure. The counterattack. That one's just wide open. Relic's, Relic's going to get credited for the goal. That was Jimmy on the flick. Nice little side pass right there for Max. And then the 50-50 is one. And of course, all Zerk was there on the rotation back through uh, just spawning there. So unfortunate. But we find ourselves at a tie ball game. A tie ball game. You don't care if it's pretty. You, you don't care if it's ugly. You just care if it counts. As Jimmy, not able to get too much there, we'll leave him the corner, but his teammates trying to make this a little more helpful. And, you know, these two squads, it, it kind of just seems that they're both just fighting for that possession of the game. They have these long clears, but have not been able to really do, do too much with them as a lot of pressure has been exuding. But the last seconds, you've seen them clutch up at an open oh, net. No. TJ says that's who I am. I'm TJ LOL gets a second goal. Yeah, that's just an open net and a miscue right there on the defense. Once again, just leaving that open. And that's a big time no-no. You can't do that, especially with late time and a tie ball game. 38 seconds left, though. Let's see if Rigby can bounce back. All Zerk off the sidewall. KX to go ahead and try to put that one towards that to put the pressure on Jimmy with the follow-up as well. This is what we were talking about beforehand, Wolfie. Just keeping this offensive pressure. 30 seconds left. And it looks like Linden's pinned back in the corner temporarily. It's kind of been a game where we've seen Jimmy kind of have his name called quite a bit, but that's kind of been the only place where we've seen this offense really going. They're feeding him, trying to get him involved as much as possible. It's a good pass, unable to be fruitful. as Lexard unable to get too much, but five seconds remaining. This one may have one more chance to it. Needing to get this across the entire pitch, but taken away quickly as that ball still, still up. up. Can they zeros. keep it? To say Jimmy now keeping it advanced and then relic right back towards midfield. Linden, they hang on to that one goal lead and take the opening game here in the series. What a match that was. I was 
not skeptical whoops you, you, of the prediction but i was i was saying okay i, I want to see it and you sir are, are always a genius <laughs> when it comes to it i gotta put that out there but you know looking at this game we saw a lot of good and a lot of bad here from both these squads one thing that rigby i feel just wasn't able to do yes they got too many shots uh, they got shots on five for jimmy but unfortunately, it's just kind of been one of those predictable moments where you see him with the ball. You know what's going to be a try to shot on net. They're feeding him in and out, but just haven't been able to really open up the field too much. Yeah, I mean, and that's what we were talking about beforehand. Don't shy away from who you are as a team. And in this situation, you know, Jimmy is essentially 1v3 um, and trying to get the ball to go in his favor. But in my personal opinion, now is the time where you have to start to mix it up. You still be aggressive if you're Jimmy, still go for those solo individual plays, but then you have to have your teammates there in close vicinity to back him up on the offensive end or have Jimmy now start being more of a passing type person, bait out the defenders. One or two of them are gonna start to kind of, you know, attack him at the point of attack. And then that's when it opens up the opportunities for one of his teammates to go ahead and solidify a goal for them. So, I mean, there's a ton of things that this team can do here to find success, you know, if you're Rigby. But at the same time, I mean, I, I think it's a little bit too early to uh, to panic just yet. But as we hop into game number two on this beautiful Aqua Dome, TJ going to go ahead and start things off with the goal in favor of Linden. This one is what we were talking about. The kickoff strategy is coming out for Linden. That's what you're hoping for. First three seconds, put yourself right on the board. Now you're going to make this team in orange. Just step up the whole way saying, hey, you want to beat us now? We're, we're in a one point handicap here. You're going to have to come in and really try to tie things up quickly. But this is a game where now if you're the blue half, you just need to just have time of possession. Let it click. Uh, let it just tick down and keep going for some good defensive plays. But looks like the tie will come quicker than expected. Yeah, KX over here just doing his thing, I'm sizing this one right back up, putting it right back in the face of the defenders. Jimmy, I think you might have been trying to go for a redirect there. If not, then it's one of those shots like similar to hockey where you're standing in front of the face of the goalie trying to block them and, you know, essentially keep out their vision is the best way I can kind of describe it. This is a pitch from TJ. It's right. the 50-50 in his favor. I... Wow. I was... Trying to see how he beat him there, had one extra step. Beautiful job finding his teammate there mid. And that's the one thing that we've seen from Linden is that they're so willing to get everyone involved. I love the fact that Rigby was able to get that first score without his name being Jimmy. But Maxwell says, oh, well, let me put this through to put us up by two. Yeah, all three members here for Linden. This is why I kind of sided with them in the series. I know we didn't do predictions or anything like that, Wolfie, but all three members from Linden averaging over a goal apiece and the front runner on this team being Relic with a 1.90. So very, very close behind Brody Jimmy, behind Jimmy, my apologies. Um, but still at the same time, an impressive offense right here for Linden. And that's why they're number two right now in the rankings. I'm sorry, my, my apologies, they're number three in the rankings. You know, number three right now in the rankings, and they're coming right to the second scene saying, doesn't matter if he plays better than us. But RS says, wait a second. We're not out of this. We are where we are for a reason, as Jimmy has now picked up the passing protocols here. And I think he listened to you. Whoops. Yeah. I mean, a little bit of a passing play strategy goes a long way. You don't necessarily have to be the person to pop off and... You know, that's the one thing I'm liking about Rocket League right now, that it's evolving. There's no more individual plays. It's more or less about passing plays. And look at this pass as well. Jimmy sizes another one up. That's the equalizer. Not even a minute off the clock yet, Wolfie. And yeah, that's what you're hoping for. They're getting their playbook straight out of EU. As this game so far has just been fireworks in the first 60 seconds. Six goals, whoops. Yeah. Wow. Can't even can't even imagine right now what is going through these players' heads right here on the pitch. But the way I see it, it's still a zero-zero ball game. Everything is just reset. But at the same time, man, everyone's starting to be activated on the offensive end, and you love to see it. Now it's time for the defense to show up. Yeah, you love to see it, but the clips is what these teams will love to see. Hey, that they got tons of those. Yes, yeah, zero-zero, but they got some pride at the end of that. But is this one almost going? TJ slightly misses that one. Could have been the fourth goal, but we'll have to see if they can get a parry here on the counter as TJ able to grab a pinch. Maxwell leaving it for a teammate's relic, just trying to move this up himself. 
Oh, that's a good 51. All Zerk. Doing a good job. Bringing this one right back towards midfield. A little bit of trickery coming out as well. Relic not but on the fakes. Someone falls to the wayside, falls in the corner. Maxwell can't really get a chance to even touch that one. And you see KX just in his face. Here comes All Zerk now. Going to dribble this one up. Jimmy up in the air as well. Trying to get the redirect to Maxwell. So far, doing a great job with the clear. Relic, though, going to go ahead and stretch this one out back towards the orange half. A good shot by Maxwell. Just trying to put some pressure onto this team. As Jimmy getting enough of a touch to make it at least a little easier for himself. But the Devo by Relic. The double touch off the backboard for the lead. Big time shot in transition as well. Relic making it look easy out here. Putting them up right back in front. I uh, can't say any more about Relic that hasn't been said already. Like I said before, just big time goal scorer. GC2. I don't know what else you want me to say about this man, Wolf. He just approved my point 10 times over with that shot. Well, his name may be Relic, but he's showing he can be innovative at any moment. Two quick goals. We'll put him in the second slot, and it seems that Lyndon High has just found the sauce, and now halftime see themselves with the two-goal lead. So lots of time left, though, especially with how this offense has been performing, though. Rigby, you go right back to work, and speaking of which, they do just that, the overtake. All Zerk had that one dead to rights, and you saw the overtake right there from KX. Jimmy trying to put that one back in as well. And that's where I feel like Jimmy should thrive in some of those counterattacks. And, you know, when, when he has that 1v1 opportunity, that's where Jimmy should be stepping up big time and scoring here for Rigby. Trying themselves to get one more goal. They can push this by three. You can potentially see the next two minutes just being a keep away game as a double demo. Make things awkward. Relic for hat trick. Leaves it mid. TJ! Not strong enough for the defense able to push that off quickly as they're needing to get on the ball here and get a goal before I believe the 60 second mark if they want an easier time to come right back into it. But the defense again denying everything. Yeah, Maxwell stepping up big time as well. You see him going for some demos, getting into the heads of the defenders, maybe trying to open up the door here for Linden to score another goal. I would think that they score one more than that could potentially push this one over the limit here for Rigby, but still the time dwindling down, working against them as well. Jimmy, smart play, pushes it over into the corner, 100 boost to work with. One, one touch, soft touch over the middle as well. TJ going to save it away. Here comes the offense again for Rigby. Going to concede and just give up a possession over the Relic. Jimmy fires a shot right back towards net. Here comes KX now. Trying to bring this one. Semi potential, I was going to say, side air dribble. Going down for a pass. KX trying to size it up as well. Just more opportunities falling to the wayside. You know, whoops, this game has been so chaotic. And I believe it's just still game number one. This game is going to really show us where we have to go in this journey between yeah. Linden and Rigby as Relic. We'll be able to win a 50. TJ pushing this ball right back down, but we'll just be left safely into the corner. This one will push it right back on for a possessional play, but the blue half. Linden winning that game number one, looking to win this second game as well. Rigby trying to prevent that. That shot could potentially do that six seconds on the clock. We've seen some kickoff shenanigans happen before in the past. They definitely need to bust it out here now. You know, whoops, six seconds. This, this team is really putting on a great display of action. And I'll be honest, this game has been so chaotic. I forgot entirely about that first game. I, 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 I got so locked in and focused. All that mattered was the five minutes I was right in front of me as this game has been everything that we've hoped for as Linden grab themselves a huge win here. Yeah, big time win, back-to-back -back dubs as well. The close game on the score line, and this is what we were looking for these close games, but still Linden find their way to find success every single time and somehow push their way in and push their way through as well, Wolfie, uh, just time and time again. But think back to that first opening minute of the game, six goals scored. That was ridiculous. That's exactly why I was 
just in a moment where this game just took me for a ride. There were so many ups and downs, and it was filled with so many of them where they said, "Hey, we're just gonna put, we're just gonna throw it all out there for everyone to, for, to everyone to watch." And I, it was an absolute spectacle. But it's not over. <laughs> can they hold on and continue putting that type of prowess here in this next match? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can find an answer. Hopefully, we can get a win in the win column as well as Rigby. But you know, if uh, I was gonna say time stands true, like we thought last time, thinking back to the last series when they met in week number two, they did win that third game. Um, so hopefully, they found the key to the vault and they can find themselves with a uh, couple of goals here because that's what they, where they've been struggling for the most part. Um, looks like we have a little bit of a disconnect issue for some of the players out here on the pitch. They should be joining back here temporarily as game number three started. But regardless of the fact, Rigby has been struggling on the uh, goal department, even though they only had four goals last game. It's kind of weird to say that. They need to get out front early. I really feel like they need to establish the pressure early on as well. And on top of that, uh, you know, score the first opening goal because that to me adds just so much more mental um, scoring that first goal. We've seen this team kind of just be able to have that monkey get off their back, as I said so far, just knowing that, hey, we have some weight off our shoulders. We can kind of go in there and just kind of relax, play our ball game, and just try to see if we can get some lucrative looks as TJ has again found himself first on the score line. Yeah, TJ's doing such a good job off these kickoffs, just getting himself in the right position to score and, you know, he finds himself in favorable positions multiple times. And like we said, starting off in the second game, he scored that first goal as well. And this is where this team could potentially try to make it two quick goals as for this team in orange. Uh, this is a, it's an interesting one. Jimmy left the lobby in between matches and he went and switched from his Fennec that he was using to an Octane. So maybe trying to go for a different hitbox. You see him potentially try to shake things up with a good touch there. Wards off a potential demo off the ceiling, but can't get too far with it. It's a good 50. We'll leave this right back for a teammate. Off the backboard, TJ doing a good job taking the opportunity away. Jimmy now has a little bit of boost, a little ceiling pinch as well. KX trying to catch up to that one. Couldn't find the redirect and big time missed opportunity. A little bit of a miscommunication here on the offensive end as well. It's gonna leave Jimmy in a situation. He had to challenge that ball early. He was the last person back here for Rigby. Mm -hmm. That, that's dangerous there you, against a good team right now where you're down a goal yep. you can't allow for double commits to really start coming into the game plan that's just going to push you in these positions where no one's going to be able to recover you're just going to look down and look at your teammates saying oh was that me but 344 remaining relic gets a good touch jimmy trying to work this off the other end can he dime up a teammate but not strong enough that this one will just lead towards midfield three minutes and 32 seconds on the clock, nice soft touch right there from Relic as well. That was gonna be pinched away over towards the opposite end. TJ has enough boost. Going off the ceiling as well, showing his skill set. It's very rare to kind of see that challenge at this level, but once again, Linden playing at such a different level right now than Rigby is. They're trying to play catch up essentially as well. This one goal lead could stand. You know, and this one goal lead just feels so large just because of how little offense we're seeing from this Rick B side. As yeah. It just feels that Jimmy's had some looks himself, does have one shot, but we just need to see everyone else start to get themselves involved. He had some good shots last game by allowing Jimmy to be that first man to get a teammate uh, mm -hmm. an open look. As we see, we have a roll one. We have yep. a 2v2 now in our hands, and Jimmy takes advantage. Yeah, I was going to say that as well. Jimmy is going to thrive right now in a 2v2 situation. Uh, he says in the lobby chat, he's 1760 <laughs> in twos, by the way. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but hey, we're going to let him have his moment. But in a situation like that, 2v2 allows you just to have so much more space and so much more time on the ball. And that's where Jimmy's going to thrive in those 1v1 situations. And he proves just that by getting that goal. Well, when you see the advantage, hey, that's going to be the mo now get some demos start clearing off some of these players to allow jimmy to really use that 1760 with advantage knowing from all that full experience playing some really high ranked players tj getting one up maxwell will grab a 50 as jimmy just left towards mid trying to run back for boost yeah i was gonna say jimmy without some boost like that's not a good look whatsoever you have to have a little bit in your tank and you know 
he's doing a good job stepping up with the little reserves that he has but at the same time you know he's the type of player that i feel like he's so used to having that hundred in his tank and on top of that so used to having so much more space so when he doesn't have either one of those things he's kind of not necessarily panics but you know he's limited as far as his mobility goes right and this is a player that you've seen him really use that mobility to advantage so you know, it's just where it takes him out of his element and this yeah. is where these teammates are gonna have to really notice that hey he's low on boost here let me try to see if i can play the redirect let me try to see if i can put myself in the off ball positions where i'm starting to become extremely dangerous now you have to mark me you can't allow for yourself just to rely straight on jimmy whereas jimmy putting it towards mid relic right there the whole way it takes it right off i know it's been pretty much the jimmy show this whole entire time too but I mean, we got to show some praise and some love over here to the Linden side of the pitch. You know, TJ's been stepping up big time for him. Yeah. Maxwell doing a great job, you know, being that disruptor and kind of getting some demolitions and, you know, opening the door for some of these opportunities that his teammates, you know, people like Relic have been shooting and uh, finding some pay dirt for. But so far here in this game, number three, things have been kind of lax. The only goal that has been, you know, in favor of Linden so far has been the first opening one for TJ and that's been pretty much stagnant the whole entire time on the offensive end. So good job by Rigby uh, stepping up on the defensive end. Especially after a game that the way they just had third man there. TJ gets a touch. Maxwell with the dunk, but can't flush it through. They're going to have to regroup or we may see an overtime. Yeah, huge save right there. Jimmy stepping up. Getting that one out of the lower 90. I thought he was going to be a little bit too late, but at the same time, he just timed it perfectly to keep that one at bay. One to one ball game. Final 10 seconds now. Here comes a pop pass over from TJ. Al Zerk going to keep that one away over into the corner. Jimmy in trouble. That one's oh. going to be pitched in. Oh my goodness. What a play right here from TJ. Somehow, some way, finding this play and just getting some Rocket League luck on your side. This is Rocket League. I, you, you said it. I don't. I don't know what else to say there. But great job by continuing on through the play. A lot of players may just say we're gonna chalk it up to OT, but not this squad for Linden. Said so we play till the final whistle, and that right there got them a game three victory as they have just been able to put the sauce. That's and insane. TJ has just been all over it. Yeah, it's 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 been insane. It's been insane to see. And like I said beforehand, I said this towards the tail end of that game number two. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to reiterate and repeat myself, but it's for good reason. You have to have that first opening goal so far. Linden, when they got that first opening goal, you see them kind of put it in cruise control. But I mean, not by default, put it in cruise control by any means. But at the same time, if you're Rigby, you have to have that first initial goal coming into this matchup to just get that monkey like you said off your back and, and essentially just relieve that pressure that first like goal jitter i guess you could kind of say and then after that be a little bit more lax but one goal is not gonna win you this game no it's not but one interesting thing everyone here from the rigby side decided to leave lobby right now it seems there may be a car change or trying to change things up but i think it's a good sign that they're saying hey we may just need to change things but maybe get another preset you want to feel a little speedier uh, coming into these games, but game number four, they're going to have everybody watching to see if they can really come away with it. But what's something that you have liked that rig at Linden has just been able to consistently get away with? I mean, essentially, they've been getting away with just a lot of far clears and then catching the defense off guard on the back end. Um, like I said, the Rocket League luck has been on their side as well. Uh, you've seen that, that last goal from TJ that just opened up the whole entire possibility. And now you find themselves on match point, I believe, as well, um, being 3-0 and in this series. But, I mean, maybe I'm jumping the gun just a tad bit. Uh, but Rigby, like, they show flashes of brilliance every single time. But they just haven't really been able to put one and two together to make three. Well, they're going to have to get their calculators out for some quick math as we're trying to multiply a couple victories here is Jimmy can't lead it for a teammate Alriz in a good spot as a potential double commit there the defense able to recover as Relic just needing to get a long clear leaving it towards mid as no early standing we were talking about first goal here and I like the offensive pressure that we're seeing from this Rigby squad they're saying hey we understand it's it's lose or potentially go down and we want to make sure we put up big of a fight and this ball, Relic on net, but a good save. 
Yeah, so far the communication uh, for Rigby, I think a little bit lacking right now. You see the double commitment right there from their defense to keep that ball at bay. Yeah, it works out in their favor, but at the same time, it's a little bit of the trust issues that you have to kind of worry about and you know, the communication like you were talking about earlier as well. So I want to see Rigby clean things up, get the, communi get the communication working, and you should start to see some you know goals being generated from that. Jimmy, trying to take it down. KX will have a touch, but not enough to keep possession. And off the ceiling, Relic trying to get himself off his half. And this is where this team, they, they are trying to get this ball quickly off, not allowing for themselves to get into the defensive end where they're potentially in these moments where they're on the back heels, don't know how to react, and they've always continued staying that step forward as TJ Musty Pass off the side. Need to find a teammate, Maxwell. But Jimmy denies the clip. Huge save right there from Jimmy. That's such a great advancement as well from TJ with that musty flick pass. Wasn't really a threatening shot. Big time bump as well from KX. But Jimmy, I think he was expecting, you know, the defense to kind of be pulled out in that situation. Wasn't expecting KX to be there. And that's what we've been talking about so far. This is an open net right here for Relic. He puts one off the side wall. Not going to be able to find his mark. Maxwell to put back as well. Going to be denied by Alzerk. Not too sure what's going on right here on the defensive end, but the offense struggling as well for Linden. And you're seeing here just a bunch of diving bodies. No one's really getting too much touch, but a good job by Jimmy coming in the last second as TJ will calculate and leave that miss in the corner and understanding that's the safest position for his squad to be in as we'll be able to take control. And, you know, methodically, haven't seen a goal here. It seems that this team from Rigby has really found themselves in a better defensive position where after that big blowout in game number two, they understood that, hey, we allowed a lot of goals. We know what we did wrong. Now it's time to clean things up. And with two minutes to go, they potentially have a chance of taking a lead and more importantly, taking a game. Under two minutes to go, still a scoreless game. And the longer this one goes on, the more and more that one goal is going to be, you know, the kingmaker essentially in this point in time. Off the backboard we go, far stretch. TJ back though to receive it off the backboard. Maxwell right side lurking. Can he get the shot off? He does get a shot to be denied initially from the defense. AX finds himself with low boost. TJ, soft put back. Jimmy has to be the savior. Not going to find his mark. Relic going to go ahead and strike. And he shoots this goal. Linden up by one. And that's always the tough part. You said it. Jimmy has to be the savior there. No one else back there to help him defend. And he took a tough position, too. Deciding to go off the sidewall. Not an easy one to really get consistently. It was a fake kickoff. You were hoping for these whoops. They do it here in the last couple of minutes. Jimmy unable to leave it towards midfield. And a good shot on! Crossbar down, and we're tied! Huge goal, and this is what we were talking about, the kickoff strategy and what happens afterwards. It has a ton of pressure. KX fires this one through. Relic was there. A little bit of cockiness behind that one as well. He thought he was going to save it away, but that one sneaks right behind him. We have ourselves a tie ball game. What more do you want for a team with the entire weight of the world on their shoulder? The good flick there, TJ will be back as a good touch will leave this up for the orange half. But hey, 1-1 one, one, whoops. This team is battled in. They saw themselves needing a change and they had the guts to go and execute it. Under 60 seconds to go. Cross shot coming through as well. Relic trying to find some pay dirt with that. This one's going to find itself Oh, Alzerk catches up to that ball. TJ, though, with the response. Can we see a potential overtime for the first time in this series? Fighting to stay alive right here is Rigby. The put back too strong. Maxwell is going to find himself with another goal here in the series. Linden up by one. That's that's just bad rotation, unfortunately. Just caught, caught in a bad position. Jimmy and KX needed to have a little more separation. But great job here by this Linden squad to take full advantage of the little opening they had. It wasn't like it was a huge gap. We had to thread the needle through, but 30 seconds remaining. This team needing a big comeback here in the late stage of the game four. Yeah, it can happen as well. Rigby looking a lot different in this one. Oh. They have some sort of sense of urgency, and this is the icing on the KKX second goal. 18 seconds left. Can they stay alive and force this OT? What a shot. Open net. 
defense and error 404. You know TJ just saying, uh, skip, 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 guys. We don't have to watch that one. But for the amount of goals he's had, he's going to try to get himself one back in the final couple of seconds. Uh -oh. That's a good touch. Uh oh, TJ, the hero once again for Linton. Soft flick to himself, softer touch in the upper 90. Wow. You, you just kind of have to look at that shot and say, all right, you're better. You, you let a goal down, but you made it up for your team. And you know, whoops, in, in sports, in life, they say it's all right to make mistakes. But you have to go make it up, kid, some way. And he did it in the huge moments. It's Red like one more down. Wow. Won't be able to get it as Linden will grab himself a huge victory late. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I knew it was going to be, you know, Linden on top in this situation. But at the same time, the, the way that they did it... Uh, was very, very heroic. I'm not sure if they intentionally did that or not, Wolfie. Uh, Rigby did a heck of a job in this series as well, staying alive, and we knew it was going to be a close one. I was hoping maybe to see a potential best of seven in yeah. this one. I, 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 could, I, I could foresee it going the distance, but at the same time, I mean, Linden, just a powerhouse of a team, a ton of offense behind them, and that's where Rigby and them, uh, that's the decision maker right there. Rigby just could not get their grasp on the offensive end and keep Linden at bay at the same time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Rocket League action continues to get better and better as we have our finale here for tonight coming right after this quick break. My name is Wolfie Tua in the booth with Whoopsie. Make sure to smash that heart button. Leave a follow. We love you. And we'll be right back.